I think we're live now. Yes. Hi, okay. everyone. It's Love Suhaidi. And this is Love Suhaidi Live. This is the second episode. And I'm super excited with my guest today, Jenny, Mexican-American sensuality and soul coach, mother, writer, energy walker. I feel like I should, I, I'm like, I started talking like Maya Angelou. <laughs> energy walker. Yes. Hello, Jenny, from where you're from in Dallas, no, Fort Worth. So I'm in Fort Worth, but I'm from LA, but I live in Texas. Okay, so yeah. you live in Texas. So first of all, what is sensuality and soul coach? Because sensuality, I know, but what is a soul coach? Well, in my line of work and what I, how I approach this, it's like the marriage of like sexuality and spirituality. So like you have okay. sexuality and then like who you are who your soul is and how your soul, how you connect to your soul and how you connect to others. So okay. That, so that that's the sensuality. Cause that, I mean, that makes sense. It should marinate, right? If you're not yeah. connected to yourself, you can't connect to others. And then and you can't not get... connect it to like your own pleasure. Mm -hmm. Then you can't connect. Ooh, yes. And how do people, I'm just going to get right into it. This was not in the plan, but we're going to get into it. <laughs> so, okay. I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put a little table on that because I want to talk a little bit about that. But the first segment is love bites. And I wanted to talk to you about this, which actually relates to it. So I want to talk about being with someone who is emotionally unintelligent. Can you, so if you're someone like yourself, who's like a sensuality and soul coach or someone who's like self-aware, or at least it's trying to take accountability and trying to right. learn about themselves. How do you make that work? Can, can someone that's growing and, developing into like a self-aware and very emotionally intelligent human being be with someone who isn't there or isn't willing to go there i think who that's a deep question right because it's like it's work right to get to know mm -hmm. yourself in that layer and you're basically like well what the work looks like is like peeling back layers of who right. you thought you were to find out who you really are and the work is very lonely it's very it's hard it's, it's painful it's painful yes and it's and i i was i'm reflecting a lot because i'm about to be uh 30 in a, in a month and i'm like i just it just clicked to me that i'm like oh when you were 19 you started having sex and i was like okay so you've been having sex for 10 years Damn and you. it's like I'm, I'm, sex. I'm 40 so i'm like i'm just like <laughs> I'm just in this place of like what I want my next decade to look like, right? That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh, okay. And it was one of the nights that I think I was just like emotionally, I feel a lot. I just, I'm a feeler. I'm, mm -hmm. I had one night What's that I was sign, like, girl? What's your sign? I'm a Scorpio. Oh, that's why the sensuality, yes. it all makes yes. sense. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm an Aries. Aries. You're, you're in a what? I'm an Aries. Oh, yeah. I can see your. You part. can see it. <laughs> yeah, it sparks off. <laughs> yeah, and it's like Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon, and then like, yeah, You're like intense. I'm intense, yeah. and I was like being, and and I had to learn, and I was having one of those moments of like, oh shit, like you really feel on another level, like, and I was having like, oh wow, you are basically like a walking feeling. That's just. <laughs> Like and then not, a lot of fuzz, not even fuzzy because feelings could be anger. Could be everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, if there were each a body part on my body, I would know where each of them lived because I feel that intensely. Wow. And then I was yeah. like, but, and I was asking myself like, okay, so in these 20, cause I've never, I've never been in a relationship, like a real one. No, no. no. Okay. So what do you define as a real relationship? Because to some people, okay. A relationship could be an open relationship and that could be a real relationship. That's a real relationship. Right. I've never like um, two parties haven't agreed to be in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> two parties have been like, I want you. Mm, I don't Maybe think so. I can, can, can we commit? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Listen. I've never gotten a verbal yes. Te, com te compadezco because I, I was like that. I'm 40. And for a really long time, and i that's how I started my career as a relationship writer, mm -hmm. I would write about all of this, you know, heartbreak and 
non-reciprocal love. Like none of the, when I loved and wanted to be with someone, it was never reciprocated. It was hardly, not never, it was rarely reciprocated. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the people who wanted me, I was like, nah, man, I want, but I want that one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want, so, well, that's what I realized. Like that was my realization. I wanted emotionally unavailable I attracted emotionally unavailable partners because I was emotionally Because you weren't emotionally available. Yeah, yeah. Because I was not in tune. Like, I, and it comes from pain, and it comes from heartbreak, and it comes from disconnection of, like, the body. And the, the basically, like, you disconnect. And it's interesting because, like, if you really, really break it down and, like, really, it comes from trauma, it comes from abuse, mm -hmm. it comes from, mm -hmm. it comes from whatever you needed to do, whatever your body needed to do to protect your soul, right? Exactly. And yeah. it would leave. It would leave. It was, like, it would, I would show up to sex, but my body's there, but I'm out. Yeah, that was me, too. Yeah. But yeah, then it, I was not, it was it was I uh, it and I would like complain all the time like but I want a relationship and I want I a commitment and why do these these men don't take me seriously and I'm such a good person I have such a good heart but I continually chose men who like from jump were like yeah I'm not looking for anything serious or like had a girlfriend I, oh for me it was like all right let me change your mind well. I, I, oh, you were, oh, you were that girl that was like, oh, my vagina. I talked about it in the first life. My vagina is so good. I'm gonna, I'm different. My vagina I'm is so, so good. Okay, I'm gonna funny. get him. <laughs> it's so annoying. It's such an ego trip. But I think it is. A lot of women do it though. Like, well, because oh, I think it's like a, I just want to play games. But guess what? I'm different. I'm oh, different. So, so he's gonna, he's gonna want to be with me. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work it like that. That's so I'm common. I'm gonna feed it. I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna be there. I, they're not even gonna want me there, and I'm gonna be there. And it's like, and but it's another pattern that we learned in childhood or whatever. Or like, if it, you don't even have to go far. How did your dad express love? Oh, my como Latinas, especially like realistically speaking. I mean, I saw my mother cater cater to my father all the time. So I learned that the way to get a man to love you was to constantly do things for that person. Put yourself second, not speak up. That even if you were tired, like if you don't have food on the table, then you're not like a woman enough and it's a problem. Yeah. So it's like, even if you didn't feel like doing something, you had to do it because that's what you do as a woman that's in a relationship and that's a mother. So I've, I've been like, kind of working through that in my relationship now we've been together for four and a half years this is the longest relationship i've ever had yeah 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 you know, with the father of my son because i've had other relationships yeah. where it's like they're choosing to be with me and i'm choosing to be with them but there was a point where it was like okay they're choosing to be with me for like three months and then they're like yeah no i think i'm confused my ex came back i don't i want to see other people i don't you're too intense or like and but i was they were trying to get or, back is that what they were saying or you were saying? That's what they would say. Oh, yeah. So I would always, the men, even when I was in relationships, even if they seemed available, one when, when it got really, once it hit like the three month, four mark, month mark, where it's like when it gets really serious and we were together and I was your girlfriend and I would meet his parents and his friends and I would say, this is legit, something would happen. An ex would call, um, something would happen. They would go on vacation and come back with a new realization. <laughs> So I'm epiphany, like, uh, I don't think this is going to work. I need some space. They needed space. And I was like, well, we've been together for four months. And but like, it's going good. You're talking about the future. And I met your parents. Yeah, but it's going good. What you mean? Yeah. And but what, I would fight. I would what, fight, fight, fight to, for that man to want me again. And what made the shift or what changed? The shift was once I became aware, I had to go through a lot of pain. I went through a lot of phases where it was like, all right, if men don't want me, then I'm gonna be like a dude and I'm just not gonna give a fuck. I went through that phase. And then I went through a phase where it was like, no, I, I went through like a, I'm not gonna date for like a year phase. I'm not gonna have sex for like a year. I, I went through all the phases. And then I, even through those phases, I came coming, coming back to the same type of guy. So then I was like, okay, I literally like wrote a list. Like what, what is attracting me to these men? describe every guy that i've like wanted to be with and it was like they had the same qualities great qualities but then they ha they did the same thing so i was like okay there's a pattern i'm choosing this you know they asked for my number i'm giving it to them they're pursuing me and courting me and i'm allowing it 
Yeah. So you know what? When, when I see something that looks like this, I'm gonna run in the other direction. When I see a man that's not upfront about what he wants, that's mm. well, you're playing games team. or word games, or and if, if if a man that I that I meet is like, oh, I just broke up with my my ex a month ago. <laughs> They're like, oh, unavailable. It was just like unavailable. Red flag, red flag. So well, I had you to were being to real flag. with yourself of what you really wanted, and then. You were being real with yourself of like, oh, okay, let me see this. So then you couldn't accept anyone that's not real with themselves. And I think like um, one of the, what I've learned and it's like looking at my, my, my journey and all that and like seeing my patterns and all that. And like, there was one thing that um, Melinda, her name, her, she's Moo Moo Mansion on Instagram. She was like, they get better when you do. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. yeah, it's almost like treat some, you know, someone treats you the way you allow them to treat you. Yeah, the well, same, you same, treat concept. same concept. Same concept. Like, you can't meet someone like basically like fuckboys are at this kind of frequency, right? They're at this frequency where it's like, and it's not even like fuckboys, but it's like unemotionally. You don't want to in who are emotionally unavailable, right. they're or emotionally unintelligent. Yeah, that don't that once you start doing this reflection, this soul work, this like layering this uncovering and veiling and crying and shedding and like basically removing everything who you thought you were to find out who you really are um that's the vibration that you're operating at and there's no and and back to my question yes you i feel like you can once you get to that vibration it's that almost sense. impossible to be with someone who's emotionally unintelligent and emotionally unavailable yeah. and not really self-aware and taking accountability for their choices and where they are in their life. It's like yeah. hitting a wall, like- You uh, cannot no accept us la mierda, like for free. Yeah, no, like, no. Nope. That's cool, and, and, or you can see it. Yes, you can smell it. You can literally be like, oh, I was attracted to that before? Oh, and then, and then like, what, I've, what I've learned that helped me is having so much compassion and like, yes. writing myself, my 19 year old self a letter, writing my 21 year old self. Oh, I love that. Like writing all these like, Stop like shaming, like, you know, like not shaming her or like, I have compassion for you, girl. That's how much, that's how much pain you would allow because that's how much you felt. But it's yeah. like, and like when she shows up, cause she, she shows up right in the mind, like real quick of like, oh, okay. Well, um, well, my thing is that when I'm realizing it's like, it's easier for me not to love. Yeah. It's easier yeah. for me not to be in a relationship because I've already gotten used to it. It's yeah. been years. Like it's this a lot easier. easier because I'm in a relationship. I've been with him for four and a half years, and this is the most work I've ever done. It's so much work. The most work I've ever done. Like, and even the most pain I've probably ever been in because of the work. And when you hit the wall, and when you're like, "Is this gonna work?" And you love someone, and you have a child with someone. Mm. It's a completely different type of intensity and a completely different type of pain. And to mm. go back to what you said when you said, you know, you got to a point where like, you know what you want. See, for me, it was different. I knew what I didn't want. Mm, that's beautiful. Right? Oh, yeah, so, so the big picture, I still knew I wanted a healthy relationship, whatever that meant. And, and with a loving partner who was going to commit to me and I was going to have a family and I was going to get married, blah, blah, blah. That's like, it was like very general. Like mm -hmm. fantasy. And then I knew what I didn't want the unavailable guy, the guy that was gonna play games, the guy that wasn't gonna tell me what he wanted, you know? But when it came to the nitty gritty and like, what type of partner, what qualities, what value system? How do I wanna be treated? How do I wanna be loved on a day-to-day -day basis? I did not, I started learning this in this relationship because this is my first major relationship. What's your and first I, real? This yeah. is my first real, like, See, like, so yes, I had other relationships where I was like six months, a year, but it was never this deep. You know, it was never like deep for, for us in terms of how I felt about him and vice versa and creating a child together and making that mm -hmm. choice together and saying, we're going to make a child together. Let's let's do it. You know, like I looked at my ovulation calendar like this was a plan, you know, and we're going to start a family. And then it was also like deeper because it's it's like a whole nother level of commitment when you have a kid yeah and you know? and i think with that i wanted to say like 
what these relationships do, like these kind of relationships, like that are divine and that, they're work because they bring up all your shit. All your shit. All your and shit. Everything you that like, I worked on. <laughs> it's it's like, oh, there you are, abandonment issues. Hey, girl, where you been? <laughs> yeah. Hiding because when something is working and it's a commitment, it feels really good and you feel like I made it. And all these people on social media is like, oh my God, I've been following your journey. And like, you finally found the person and you made it. That's how I felt for a long time. But then the work had to happen because in order to maintain the connection, in order to communicate, in order to, you know, to grow, because I'm constantly growing. So then mm -hmm. we're going to constantly grow. We're going to evolve. And, and, if, yeah. Yeah, we're, and, and our relationship is going to evolve, not just because we've been together for a longer period of time than one six months and but because we're parents and then responsibilities come in like paying the bills and work and take care and it just it just it's so many layers of, of a relationship that you don't really know and i didn't really know until i was in it mm. you know how they say you don't really know until you experience it when it comes to relationships or mm. people used to say oh talk to me when you're in a relationship talk to me and i would take offense you're kind of like I know oh, love. I've been hurt. I have emotions. I have experience. But it's like no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But level. And I was just I was just talking to a friend of mine about it because I was like, I I'm eating my words so much now that I'm in a relationship, a committed relationship, and I'm a mom. I used to be so judgmental of my mom friends when I was in my 20s and they were having babies and they didn't want to hang out and they wouldn't pick up their phone. Right? And I'd be like, damn why can't you pick up your phone on the weekend you don't got you don't got arms you can't pick up the phone because you're a mom and you're in a relationship and now weekends come and i'm a ghost girl if you get one hour on a weekday by yourself yes that's like what when you're a mom and i think and i think that's very important i think i wanted to bring that up like gifting yourself those 30 minutes of like goddess time because yes, i was gonna ask you that oh you jumped ahead i was gonna ask you that all right so this was listen we can go on and on so you're gonna have yeah. to come back but we gotta move yeah. on because it's already seven, six, so, seven. <laughs> this time goes back so fast right? I know. so i have another segment called the love rapidita and this is something i wanted to talk to you about because so the love rapidita we talk about celeb stuff but there's been all these articles the american music awards were last last night and jennifer lopez and Mar mariah carey performed on the stage they didn't perform together Okay. But there were all these articles like our ri the rivals are heading for a showdown. And I, and I want to talk to you about sisterhood and how often like, okay, Mariah Carey, the background is that once upon a time, they asked her about Jennifer Lopez. And she said, who's that? I don't know her. And this is like back in the 90s. When she's like coming up. Yeah. Where she was being shady when she said that to JLo. But it's been something like they weren't even performing together. And every article that I looked at was like, you know, divas unite on stage. What will happen? They weren't on the same stage. Like, they were just both Anything performing. To sell a click. Anything to sell a click. And it's like. I, I I would love to know your opinion on sisterhood since you work with so you know soul coaching yeah. and really, and we both met at we all grow yeah and that's like the epitome of sisterhood but I do find it sometimes challenging. I'm 40. I'm a mom. I live in Long Island now. I'm from Washington Heights originally. I've been here for three years. It's been really difficult for me to make connections with women at this age, and connections that are real connections. Mm -hmm. And even in business, I feel like women don't tend Latina specifically have a really hard time collaborating and really building together. They, mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be an island. Everybody wants to be a what? An island. Uh huh. Like everybody wants to be Dominican Republic and then Puerto Rico. You know, nobody wants to really collaborate, and so like. There's all this sisterhood going on on social media, but that is sometimes I feel like it's all sh it's all bullshit. It's all talk. Ooh, like, is it real or is like it just put, like your, put, put your money where your, your your mouth is? You know. I think where I think with all that, I think where it originated is like the men and not only the men, but like the patriarchy all that benefits right. from us being at war from each other. Mm -hmm. And it's like if we knew the power that togetherness we collectively mm -hmm. bring because I even right now before this I jumped on a call with my girl and she's in New York and she's like telling me of all these like miracles and like magic that's happening in her life and like kind of these moments of like self-realizations that she's having right. 
oh, because Venus is in retrograde and is bringing up yeah. all of her love. <laughs> I know. I'm trying and to keep it together. So tell me. Yeah, she's like, so tell me what's going on with you. And I was like, I feel like I just talked. Like, I see you as a mirror. Oh, wow. Okay. I like, I believe that. When you connect with a woman, sister to sister, soul sister to soul sister, you are, in a weird way, even though you're experiencing completely different things, you're feeling the exact same thing about the different things you're experiencing. It doesn't matter. Like, And I have this with my friends who are not moms, and that's really hard for me because like, my closest friends are not moms. That was me for a long time. You know, and then I'm like, oh, and I've been see, say, saying this mantra, like, dope mom needs more dope moms. Like, and I saw it on a hoodie, like, or something like, dope, dope mom, mom, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we live in different states, but we're I'm a dope mom. Dope mom. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, because it's, it's a different life. And then again, but then the, I see myself when I, when I come, when I, when that trap of, um, I think ultimately, even with JLo and Mariah, it's like, what does she have that she doesn't have and she have that this doesn't have? So then we go into these mind things, yes. right? But when we drop that and we're just like, girl, let's, 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 let's support each other. Like, your shit is different. Your shit is dope. And even like my, my one manager from, anyways, I was at work and there was this, we were sharing, we were ta- having lunch yesterday and this manager told us that she's already like older and like not having her period, but she went <laughs> on to, well, yeah, it's real. And then she, she went her. on this, like, okay, it don't matter. But it was just, like, she went on this trip with younger women and, like, how her period came. I was like, that is our cycle. Power. And then not only hers, but it was, like, other people's. And she doesn't have, she's on menopause. She doesn't get her period. Right. It don't matter. When we unite, that is the power that we bring together. And it's like, oh, uh, there's nothing more sacred than, um, holding that space and meeting women where like in that, in that kind of, in that way. But I think that just like we were talking about with men and or women, whoever, or someone, whoever you're dating, um, the emotional awareness and the the emotional intelligence has to be there also even in sisterhood and in friendship because I had amazing friends that fizz friendships that fizzled because they were trying to change me or I was trying to change them. And they weren't that, you know, like they, they weren't accepting me as who I am. And I, like you said, a lot of what they didn't like about me, I believe was a reflection of things they didn't like about themselves. or they were trying to fight um, about themselves. One friend in particular, I remember she used to hate the fact that I used to sleep in, in college, I was a flacker and I was sleeping through all my damn classes. Sure. And I was like, I don't give a damn. I'll pay the loans later. I ain't going to the 8.30 in the morning class. I party less. <laughs> I got an A in partying in college. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> she would get so mad at me. Like, she was my mom. What are you doing? You need to go to class. You're going to fail. And I would never fail. I would get average. You should do so much better. You're lazy. You're so irresponsible. She was like my parent. And mm-hmm. I think one of the reasons why she, now that in hindsight, right, that she would be that way is because she's fought so hard to like be the opposite of that. Mm. That she doesn't respect, almost respect people who aren't like robots, like machines who, you know, I'm a type of person. If I feel like doing something, I'll do it. If I don't feel like doing something, I probably won't. Obviously if it's something yeah. for my job, I'll do, but I might not do it right at the second. Like mm. I'll meet all my deadlines, but I might meet that shit like an hour before. Yeah. Like, that's just how you operate and that's just that's what, how i operate and i think you've given yourself permission and that freedom and a lot of women don't i didn't before i'm i'm doing it now now that i'm 40 you said how do you want to live the next decade i just mm-hmm. turned 40 in april and i've been questioning how i've lived in the previous decade and how right I just... this decade and right now the difference is mm-hmm. i want to live for me and be me and fuck it though fuck everything like mm-hmm. like dominican say fuck it though like i'm just like you don't like me whatever if this annoys you about me whatever like if i'm not hurting you then you should be good and if you're not good with it then we can't be cool and right that's my, I'm just gonna be, that's be. everything that's my relationship that's my sister that's my mom i don't even care if you're my family member if if, if i'm affecting you so negatively and you know how i do things and the way i operate if it has if i'm not if, if it has nothing to do with you and it's my life and you're so bothered by it, then mm-hmm. you could kick rocks. 
then don't talk to me mm. on a regular basis and i'll just give mm. you a summary of my life when we do talk mm. that's just kind of where i'm at right yeah, now because it's kind of like it doesn't matter what all these other stories or like, even in social media right like what whatever like unfollow me this unfollow is- yeah, that doesn't bother me. It used to bother me a lot. Boy. But now it doesn't bother me. And also what doesn't bother me is I used to get really hurt. And that was the abandonment coming in again. Hello, abandonment. Hi, friends. Hello. Since Hello. <laughs> because we we can acknowledge it, but then we just don't let it to stay. Yes. And like, I, it's I a used real to let, I, even when I would post something, like when I would reach out to a Latina, which I've done always on social media, I was like, oh my God, I'd love to collaborate with you. Yeah. Or can you come to this event for me and I'll do this for you? And it would be crickets. Or like I would throw an event and people wouldn't show up. Like 20 people were RSVP and five people would show up. Mm-hmm. Instead of being grateful for the people who were there, I would focus on the people who weren't there because of my abandonment issues. And I would even do that on birthdays. All, all through my 20s. Mm. not all my 30s but i would even do it because it was like hello abandonment like i thought i checked that but nah she abandonment was controlling she was controlling mm. how i was feeling so much so that i was like a bitch at events and my birthdays and it wasn't super super appreciative that people showed up to something that i put together even if it was just two people and, and i, I think- remember this this lady one day told me and i was so mad i was like 22 and i was i just started blogging or like writing some stuff and um this woman was like, I feel like you're, and she was like an energy person, kind of a psychic. And she was like, you seem to be like super focused on what's not important, which is like numbers and whatever. You should be focused on your creativity because that's what's going to lead you to success. Like you being authentically yourself and being creative. And I was like, nah, man, numbers mean money and I need to make money, which isn't wrong. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It isn't wrong. But it's just an old thought. It's a programming but she was like she was like she was so mad I, and i would get so mad when i would look at my numbers and it wouldn't increase and i'm like what do people want from me or when i wouldn't get acknowledgement from people in my community for doing something that i thought was awesome mm. but they wouldn't be like yo kudos to haiti for doing xyz that's dope mm, you needed um, that validation i needed validation yeah. for sure. and i think i think i think and i've read somewhere like aries and legals are the ones that struggle most with that ego of like oh yeah aries and leos yes and yes. it's and it's it's a part but then it's like it's a false self false sense of- it is because we because people see me I, I come off super confident and right. i am confident yeah some aspects but so then there's some right. things that i'm still working on they're still i'm getting more you. confident yeah yeah there's, there's, yes, I'm we're getting complicated more confident. humans like we're yes. just complex and i think and i think um I don't know if I was going to tie this back, but giving like yourself permission to be vulnerable, to be in pleasure, to be um, real and all that. I think I think that's when it comes with like, oh, shit, like then why does she get to do it? And it's a false thing. But it's like I think if we start seeing another one like, man, she really is living in her truth. What like what? That means I can you know like yeah, oh and that, that means you can't together and it's like i think going back to mariah carey and jennifer lopez when mariah carey said that i don't know her j-lo was kind of like at her height that's when she like blew up and that was threatening right and i do see that on social media with like all the beauty bloggers and all the vloggers and you know it's like latinas especially they want like oh my god there's only this piece of the pie yeah. you cannot have it right well, and they don't want to like- work together because they're like well who the hell are you and i got twenty thousand followers um, and I'm not trying to like dim my shine uh, to, to come and create something together, which is what I love about We All Grow. I don't know. Are you part of the Change Members Collective yeah. yet? Yeah. So the fact that they took that and all these women are there, like, that's how it should be. You know, like, yeah, well, I took a bunch of Latinas it. together to It's that programming. It. Look at the media. Like, I worked in radio for so long and TV. Look at, look at our families. Like, the, yeah. the lack mentality of like it's just the scarcity because of what the situation and it's no judgment and it's like the situation of like man if we are coming from a pueblo and one makes it out the ones that stay guess what they're going to be looking at you like man what you doing and then when you go so it's like it's right. a real thing that was just ingrained because of yeah. whatever has happened how it's happened and then it's our job to unpeel that and to be like no that's that's old lack mentality lack mentality like block and like 
but it's not to, not to call Joe Olstein here, but I've been going to church and I just watched him recently because I was like, I didn't go to church Sunday and I was like, I need to get some Jesus in me. So he was on TV and <laughs> me and Dave, like he was talking about the slave mentality versus the son mentality. And he was quoting the Bible and saying, you know how in um when the slaves in Egypt were freed, like they still were acting like slaves because it's the mentality, the slave mentality, like you, they were still, they, they didn't really allow themselves to be free, free in the sense of freedom, right? Um, so he said, don't have the slave mentality, have the son, like the son of Jesus of the Lord mentality. So that resonates with me what you're saying, because for a really long time, I feel like I had the slave mentality where it's like, I was making excuses for not being able to do things or yes. saying, it was this, like, such a oh, word. I wish it wasn't that word. I know, I know, I know, but it's just, it's it's kind of like a, a slave to your own mind yeah it's right a right slave to your own mind where it's there was a long time where i when my thoughts my negative thoughts were enslaving me to not be able to well, progress and be myself and really allow myself to do well and whenever something would happen it would just i would just it would just recycle that, it it like like recycle. that part of you so then it takes over so it takes over and I was never free. I, I I couldn't be free to be authentically myself. Even though I was physically free, spiritually and emotionally, I wasn't free. So if you're not free spiritually and emotionally, you don't want to collaborate with other people. You know, you, you do have the scarcity mentality. You know, you're going to be afraid to like let your guard down when you're dating. And you're going to keep choosing that. unavailable people. Those. And We're it's hard to break it, but when you break it, and it's it comes back because you break it, and you could be you can be enslaved by your by negative mentality in a heartbeat, in a moment, in a second, and then once you just like you kind of like, okay, so you feel it, you recognize it, you don't shame it, you honor it, and you're just like, all right, what can I do to make to make you feel better? Like basically. How do I recon reconnect with my true self? Because that's my false self. That's just my ego. That's just like that. an old part of me. How can, okay, back to that. How can I love you back to the past? Love with it. Love, you know, like, and with gentleness. And that's like, I practice that. Compassion, compassion. We often don't have compassion for ourselves. We have compassion you for other people. You want to have it for everybody, but how can you have it for somebody when you don't have it for yourself? Well, I, I never saw compassion like going back to you know what you see when you're a kid my mother had compassion for everyone she's a nurturer she never took care of herself she still doesn't and she's 70 years old i see it i see it with my mom and as a I woman you know like i don't have a daughter but like i wanted to have a daughter that was one of the reasons why i wanted to have a daughter so much and you know god's gonna give me a, a daughter i know it and like i know it i'm manifesting it because i really want to to change the generational cycle of having to cater to everyone but yourself having to put yourself second having to doubt yourself because you're different and you want to go a different path and and really fighting to to be authentically yourself mm -hmm. and, and 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 instead of just like saying fuck it i love fuck it this is me even changing and shifting to please other people which women do all the time over apologizing this is what women do on a daily basis in the boardroom, you know, in their relationships. You know, you with know what, I think, what? I think it's because we're not, um, we're not tapped into our pleasure. Mm, yes, tell me more. We haven't, like we have, we don't let like our desires take the lead. We take what needs to get done and what this and that. So we're more operating in our masculine energy. And then that feminine, we don't, cater to her we don't let her be that goddess we don't let her like emerge we don't let her ask us because we haven't given ourselves permission we've been told it's wrong we've been told you know it's a puta thing or whatever we've been told whatever whatever it's a lot it's heavy right but we don't operate from that from that pleasure and if we were to operate from that pleasure like how if you allow yourself to operate with pleasure without shame or guilt Mm -hmm. once you let once you let shame or guilt in there it's no longer pleasure yeah and you know and if with whether if it's a piece of chocolate that you just enjoy a glass of wine a glass of wine my chicken i'm about to throw a throw down in my belly when you <laughs> it is yeah masturbation alone mm -hmm. time like not picking up a phone call 
not picking up your kid right away and like coming yes. home and being like, oh, wow, I forgot. Well, this without shame or guilt. Yeah. yeah, without shame or guilt. And that's when you're really in your authentic power of who you are and who you were meant to be. And then oh my God, we got to end this right now. I'm so sad. You're going to have to come back. Oh my God, we can keep talking agree. over and over again. So I do want to do something which I call the love drill. Um, before we go, obviously, I want you to plug anything that you have to plug. So just answer yes or no. Do you master even when in a relationship? Do you masturbate? Yes, all day. <laughs> do you believe you can change a partner? No. Can a one night stand be orgasmic? You have an For orgasm? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, we gotta talk about this another day. Is being ghosted ever a good thing? Being what? Ghosted? 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 Um, ghosted? I feel like rejection is God's protection. There you go. Do you think a woman can be traditional and a feminist? Yes. Uh, well, traditional, that's what, in what way? And like, what you think about traditional? Well, the first thing that yeah. came to mind when I said traditional. My, like our parents, like our mother. Yeah. So can, can your mom mother? be a feminist? And I think once you just shift that, like, this is what, because it's a beautiful thing. It's a give and a take. And like, and I, I see like one of my cousin's marriage and it's like, oh, wow. I see that. I see that exchange of like, it's no longer, you take it from joy, from job to joy. Hmm. Take it from, I got to tweet that way. Take it from job. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> once you shift, yeah, like once you shift whatever you're doing, because it's beautiful to cater and to be catered, but yes. are you receiving and are you allowing yourself to receive? Are you allowing your desires and your wants and your needs? And like, I would gladly cook you up a meal because <laughs> I, you know, like, thank you for showing up in my life and doing some of this, you know, because that is girl, it's work. It's beautiful. Girl, I'm gonna tweet that, but I don't, you don't got a Twitter. I'm not active on Twitter. I'll come back. I like, I feel what, like. What, gotta, okay, so perfect time to plug. What are your social media handles? Okay. Um, Mindful Mommies on uh, Instagram. And then that's the only one I like to use. And <laughs> Facebook, Mindful <laughs> Mommies on Thank you. Facebook. Shout out to Nasu Haiti for, for. You got to be everywhere, girl. You don't got to, you know, do everything yeah, everywhere. But at, least, at least for branding purposes. You don't want someone to take your name. And then when you want to build it, you're like, right. damn, I didn't take the name when I got to have the chance. Right. And I think what's, it's, your, what's your Twitter? Um, It's going to be Mindful Mommies if it's available. Because I, I'm, I'm, my, it's not going to be available. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't see a Mindful Mommies. Well, there you go. Then I'll, after this, I'll go on there and create it. I just want to be like nervous. I just, I'm the point that I'm like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But then I'm like, okay, just do it. Just like do you it. You know what I'm going to do? It's a, I'm gonna do. Your it's website. A, what's, your, what's your website? Mindful? Mommies. With the mommies. All right. So I'm just going to put the, your website. Okay, cool. Okay. So everyone follow Jenny. Thank on Instagram, you. mindful mummies, like M A M I mummies, mamatita, na mamacita mummies. Uh, oh. I'm in love with Haiti. Right, yeah. everywhere love Swahili, and uh, thank you so much for joining me. Well, you're gonna have to come back because we could keep talking. I literally had a list of things we can talk about. We still haven't even talked about timing, and yeah, I have a list of things from too. other states. So whenever. Oh my goodness! Thank you all for joining me on Love Sweetie Live. Yeah. For more, go to lovesweetie.com. Check out Jenny and Mindful Mommies, and uh, yeah, two weeks another life of live another love to Haiti live that's a uh, that's a mouthful it's a lot of alliteration l l l another <laughs> love to Haiti live in two weeks so make sure to check it out thank you so much jenny thank you thank Have everyone great. for joining bye. uh make sure to share and comment even after the live is up bye, bye.